My name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and like many of you, I am a MIGS surgeon. Over the last eight years, I have performed several different types of MIGS procedures, and there can be a place for all of them. But today, I'd like to share with you some of my top tips for side pass insertion. I'll first review my nine steps to successful side pass surgery, but stay tuned for useful tips along the way and at the end for highlights where I'll show you how you can avoid postoperative pressure spikes, how to avoid the creation of a large cyclodialysis cleft, and how to avoid this um, not so good reaction to the side pass insertion. Moving on to successful cypass insertion. Step number one is successful cataract surgery. The cataract surgery needs to be performed first, different from other MIGS procedures, because once the cypass is inserted in position, there needs to be care to make sure it does not get dislodged. Step number two is to have a clear gonioscopic view of the angle. There should be a clear view specifically of the scleral spur, as this is an indication prior in the clinic setting to make sure that the patient is a good candidate. Step number three is hyperinflation of viscoelastic into the anterior chamber. This is helpful for easier eye stent insertion. Next, insert the loaded sidepass device through the corneal wound into the anterior chamber for preparation of insertion. Under gonioscopic view, locate the scleral spur and push just right under scleral spur into the area of suprachoroidal space. Now it should glide in, but if there's any resistance, one can look go of the sidepass device a bit early, as long as it's at least halfway in, and then just slowly tap the tip of the device into position. As it glides into position, you know that you're in the correct space. Now it's great at the end, there are retention rings that help you get a sense of how far in you should tap. The tip should be right about the edge of trabecular meshwork. Now be very gentle with your taps because it is possible for the sidepass device to be pushed too far. Now, moving on to avoiding post-operative pressure spikes. Remember how I told you in step three to hyperinflate the anterior chamber with viscoelastic? Well, it's important to get all of that viscoelastic out to prevent the pressure spikes. So after the successful sidepass insertion, use your irrigation aspiration unit in order to get all that viscoelastic out. I like to do this under gonioscopic view so that I can take care to not dislodge the sidepass and make sure that it's properly seated. Now, moving on to how to avoid those sudden head jerks during insertion. Remember how I showed you this really scary moment? Well, it can be avoided with two steps. Remember, at the three and nine o'clock position are an ample supply of long ciliary nerves and vessels that we want to avoid. So step number one is to aim for the two or four o'clock position for the insertion of the device to avoid, to avoid these areas. And step number two is to use an extra dose of anesthetic right before insertion. Propofol or Versid can be used. These two steps will help avoid those sudden jerks. And finally, my steps on how to avoid creating a cyclodialysis cleft. I believe that a large cleft is created when there is more than a perpendicular forward pressure on the tissue at the insertion site, but also an additional horizontal force that shears the tissues. My tips to avoid making these clefts are two. First, reposition yourself and your chair in addition to the microscope so that you can be directly perpendicular to the target tissue, which is at the two o'clock position. Then step number two is to make an internal groove in the internal corneal incision in order to have complete ability to insert the sidepass device directly perpendicular to the tissues without any need for twisting or torquing in your hand position that could result in any kind of horizontal pressure or force. These two steps will help make sure that you can avoid those cyclodialysis clefts. And if you like this video, let me know by clicking the thumbs up button. If you have ideas about future videos you'd like to see, go ahead and send your ideas to this email below. Also, if you want to make sure you get the next video, 
subscribe to the channel. If you think that the video is something you'd like to share with a friend, go ahead and send it. If you like these steps, tips, and tricks, for more helpful mix success secrets on various mix devices, go to iGlaucoma YouTube channel or mixsecrets.com.